not in the time of storytelling. Uh, we are in the time of power. After today and this month, you will not walk empty anymore. God will make you a container of power. This is not the time to murmur. It's not the time to cry. It's not the time to give up. It's the time to pray some more. There is a day when the books will be visited. On the last day, what will help you enter heaven is what is written on the book. You think nobody is seeing you. You are wasting time. I came to tell you the God we serve is a God of restoration. The God we serve is a mighty God. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. God is on your side. Power on your side. Glory is on your side. Look your way, Shari. Yes. Whatever you listen to me, when you walk into a system, an organization, a church, or a family, first of all, look for something that only you can do at the best. And they focus on doing it, they will always look for you to do it. They may not like your color, your complexion, your tribe, but they can't do without you because you are the one that carried the solution. The, the accused against Joseph was insignificant because the interpretation was in prison. You don't keep interpretations in prison when the palace is looking for it. They will release him. You don't have to be qualified to be released. All you need is to carry the interpretation and the prison will release you. Somebody say, I hear. Am I talking to someone? For many years, I had a challenge with a particular matter. And suddenly, I don't know how, the young man was in church on the fire night. And it became a solution to that matter. And I just discovered that sincerity is sincere. Everything is just there. Can I talk to somebody this morning? Am I blessing you? Open your Bible quickly. To Matthew chapter 16 verse 17. That's just a passive word for somebody. Praise the Lord. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona. Why did he say that to him? Hello? Can we read it together? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood. And not what? But who? Are you sure it's like that in your Bible? Yes, in the midst of them all, Jesus said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. What was the revelation? Verse 15 and 16 of chapter 16. And Jesus came one day and said, Who do men say that I am? And he said, Some say you are a liar. Some say you are this. And Peter looked at him and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed it. There was a time, as it were, they were battling for who would be the leader of the church. The apostolic move, as at that time, that was when Jesus said to them, the kingdom of God is likened unto little children. He that must be the head must first be the least. Am I speaking to somebody? But on this condition, revelation is what distinguished Peter. Galatians chapter 1 verse 12. Galatians chapter 1 verse 12. Thank you, my father. He said, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it by but okay neither was i taught it but by the revelation of jesus christ galatians chapter 2 verse 2 and paul said i went up by revelation he said and i went up by what revelation. by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them, which were men of reputation. Am I speaking here? 
in this first service i want to talk on what i titled the beauty of revelation let me preach to somebody said the beauty of revelation whether you like it or yes i stand in my place as my personal judge on this matter that one of the most outstanding apostle after jesus departed from planet earth was apostle paul am i speaking to somebody here and then while jesus was alive he called peter the rock and he said upon this rock i'll build my church and he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and then i asked myself what was the secret of peter and the day jesus handed over leadership to peter he didn't give him because he was a professional fisherman he said upon this rock that was the day that he said to peter simon but jonah blessed that thou am i talking to somebody he said for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you that gives me an understanding that what distinguishes men in life is revelation take your seat somebody shout revelation i can hear you somebody shout revelation let me say some few things in continuation god cannot say no to an act of revelation when the bible said for the word that has gone out of my mouth will not return to me void until it accomplish what i sent it we are talking about when you get hold of the revealed word of god and you put it to work god has no option that will back you not every word works but there's a word that must work is the revealed word somebody shout the revealed word I can't hear you. Somebody shout the revealed word. I came in this first service to make you understand. Revelation is what he has actually said. What he has actually said. That is the, you having an understanding of the actual meaning of what God is saying. The actual meaning of what God is saying. That is what I classify as a revelation. Having an actual meaning of what God is saying. Doing the actual thing that God has asked you to do. It's not just doing what you think. It's doing what he actually wants you to do. Am I speaking to someone here? I said something here. I said revelation is the actual secret of perseverance. Revelation is the actual secret of patience. Revelation is the actual secret of continuous doings. Revelation is the strength of kingdom continual eye flyers. Revelation is the backbone of kingdom mighty men. Revelation is the strength of a people. Revelation is the sustaining force of a people going through their possible go through. Am I talking to someone here? The reason why there is so much high service in the body of Christ, there is so much discouragement in the body of Christ, depression as it were, is because a lot of persons don't have the revelation that they are running with. When you don't have a revelation of what you do, you may suddenly chicken out as it were. He said, if thy strength fail you in the days of adversary, he said, but your strength is what? It's little, it's small. And by speaking to somebody here, I need every one of you to understand that the difference between two believers is what? It's revelation. If you don't have the revelation, the possibility of continuing may be a problem. Be a problem. But when you meet a man who has got caught, who has got a revelation, the man cannot be easily discouraged. Am I talking to somebody here? Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. There are many of us who don't have an understanding of the revealed word of God. Jesus said to Peter, who he said to them, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say, some say. And Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the Christ. And the other day, Daniel said, they that do know their God shall be strong. Hello? They that do know their God shall be what? Talk to me, church. Shall be what? And they will do what? 
they that do know their God. How do you know your God? You know your God by that which is revealed to you. Because Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. So, and he was asking to know if they know him. Am I speaking to somebody? What was the question he was asking? He wanted to understand if these people have an identity problem. So he said, who do men say that I am? And he said, some say you are a liar, some say you are this. And he turned to them and said, who do you say that I am? Because if you know me, you will stay with me. That's why Peter said, where else shall we go? Because you are the one that has the word of life. That is a man speaking from the depth of revelation. When people still see an alternative, it's because they don't have a revelation of where they are. Yes, Who do men say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ. No wonder the Bible said for they, the truth you know shall set you free. When Job was faced with the conditions of life, there is a statement Job said. He said, I know my redeemer live it that revelation kept him going many believers don't have a revelation of the god they serve we claim to know him but we actually don't know him the beauty of revelation is that he gets god on your side continually am i talking to somebody are you sure so the strength, somebody said to me, you will soon be tired of what you do. I said, I cannot be tired because I am walking on the platform of revelation. When you finish doing something, let's say for example, the, the sanctuary department was supposed to clean the church and eventually nobody came and you were like the only person in church. You did all the jobs and then on Sunday morning, you were expecting that you would be commended and then you were condemned. Am I speaking to somebody here? And your pastor or somebody, your leader, somebody said to you, who sent you over Sabi? And then because of what your leader said, you suddenly changed your mind to do. It's a sign that you never had the revelation of what you are doing. Because if it was revealed to you, you don't live on human applaud. You, am I speaking to someone here? Many years ago, I was a youth president of a church. And I think I came one time to clear the church and only me was there. I was just cleaning the church. At the end of it all, I still got some lashes from one or two. Small, small. Permit me to use the word small, small. But you know, what kept us going is that even when human beings didn't tell us thank you, we know that God is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. Who we are today is not a product of human applaud. It's a product of divine reward. Am I talking to somebody here? Don't serve because human beings to applaud you. Serve because it's a revelation. A lady came one time and said to my wife, she was a single lady of relative, she was of age. And she said to my wife, he said she had a revelation that she should come to and be helping her clean the toilets in the house. Those are the toilets she could assess. And my wife was amazed because it was like the first time she was going to hear somebody talk in that direction. Toilet. Clean toilet. So she came to the house. My wife spoke to me and I, I confided not with flesh and blood. Even I was trying to understand the dimension. But I took solace in revelation. And then the lady came to the church, to the house. At interval, she would come, clean the toilet. Eventually, she was not only cleaning the toilet, she began to assist in some other things. And before you knew what was happening, somehow, somehow, a brother who needed to pluck flower came and plucked flower. And just that revelation took her to her husband's house. And somehow in their family, there was a battle that was there. That same act of revelation, obeying a revelation as it were, gave her access that she broke the pattern that has limited others in their family. A few years ago, there was a time we had some, some strategic sisters in our midst who were grown, committed sisters, daughters of the house, who were doing the best they can to serve the Lord. 
And one time my wife came to me. She said, honey, I have a revelation. And what she was doing, she began to tell them. When women are buying rapper, she would tell them, buy the rapper. When women are going for convention, they say, oh, yeah, you people must go. You must pay convention levy. You must be part of this. You must be part of this. Somehow, one, two, three, four, five, all of them are married today. Why? Because a revelation came that a man decided to practice. Listen to me. Practicing revelation may not be convenient, but it carries an ability to change your life. Am I talking to someone? Tell your neighbor, say the beauty of revelation. Is that revelation will get God to answer you. God is attracted to revelational practitioners. Not emotional practitioners. Emotions don't earn you God. It's revelation that gets God on your side. God is committed to revelation. Not emotions. Not emotions. Many persons are weeping in his presence and they are moving from weeping to frustration because God is not dear, he's not committed to emotions like he's committed to revelation. It was not the woman's condition that gave her a miracle. She touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? And human beings began to talk. He said, but sir, we are many that are thronging you. We can't tell who touched me. Jesus knew that the touching he's talking about is not the general touch. Somebody acted on a revelation. Am I speaking to somebody? He said, who touched me? And the Bible said there was a woman who had been with the issue of blood who said, if I can but touch the hem. Somebody shout the hem. Do you know the hem of a garment? When you sew your clothes on a line, the hem is like, huh? You know there are times the body, the part of your cloth, dress or cloth is dried, but there will still be, huh? Am I speaking here? There will still be a concentration of, huh? Of water at the end, but the body is dried. So she touched a part of the garment I similarly want to reveal as a consecrated, consecrated part where the anointing is resident. She touched with a revelation mentality and she got a miracle. There are many of you who think you are touching, but you are not touching because you are either touching by emotions, you have not touched him by revelation. Revelation. There are some of us. I tell somebody I said. I told somebody I said. The life some of us will live. Is a life that has been revealed. It's not. We don't live it for human's sake. Or else we'll be discouraged. When human beings don't give us a word. But when you leave it as a revelation. Papa said it's not about the award that men give you, it's about the reward that God will give you. And God don't see your physical act like he sees your secret act. Yes, sir. God don't reward you for cleaning church as it were. He rewards you for the motives behind the cleaning. You can be arranging the church every day and people are clapping sister commitment brother faithfulness but only God knows that you are waiting for the day that nobody will be in church so you can carry the Misa hamp the Bible said Judas already collected payment for Jesus yet he was still with the disciples so everybody we call him Judas the apostle. Judas a faithful disciple. Keeping the pause but he was looking for an opportunity. You are clapping for Judas that is an apostle but Judas knows, God knows that what Judas is waiting for is the opportunity to sell him. Bible says he kissed him. Somebody will say wow what a love. But God knows it was a betrayer. Am I talking to somebody? Understand what is the revelation behind your service? What is the revelation behind your commitment? 
What is the revelation behind your sacrifice? What is the revelation behind what you do? Because your revelation is what gives birth to your celebration. Not emotions. Not emotions. So the beauty of revelation is that that is what distinguishes you. Blessed that thou Simon, but Jonah, for flesh and blood. For flesh and blood. Am I talking to someone? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. There is this practical, I want to talk about some few practical response of God to practitioners of revelation. He said, now brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except as I speak to you either, somebody shout either, by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrines. By revelation, what shall I profit you if I just speak in tongues? Let me speak some knowledge. Is somebody here today? How many of you have ever asked yourself, what is, there's a way I study God's word. When I began to look at the scriptures and I saw Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my heavenly father who is in heaven and he said to him, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he went for the Paul came to the scene and he continually spoke about revelation and he said, I went up by revelation. It dawned on me that he didn't go up by hard labor. He didn't go up by energy. He didn't go up just by strategy. He went up by what? Talk to me church. He went up by what? Then it gave me an under a consign that I began to look a few years ago into this matter called the revelation. I told people, you can't fight or you can't compete with a man who it has been revealed to. If you are doing it by emotions or by self or as an act of eye service, you will soon be tired. Because men have a way of breaking your heart. <laughs> If thank you is the reason why you did it, if they don't tell you thank you, you will not do it again. Am I speaking to somebody here? A young man said, one time I met a young man reacting. I won't do again with everything I did. Nobody recognized me. I won't do again. When it was true talking, I said, it's obvious that it was never revealed to you. It's obvious. As if it was a revelation. You should understand that God rewards revelation. Men are quick to conclude by men's action. The actions of men is what gets the attention of men. But the revelation is what gets God's attention to your direction. God is not moved by what you do as it were. He's moved by your motives. And the Bible says when they saw Eliab, someone wanted to anoint Eliab. Ah! The Lord's anointed is before him. God said, Kai, don't go there. I don't move by the makings of the physical. I move by the heart. The heart. The heart. Can I say something here? If all I ever got for being committed to this vision was a word without an obvious evidence of God's reward, I would have stopped practicing. Somebody didn't hear what I said. If all I got was that they called my name in Ebenezer and gave me a word by men and I don't see the similarities of God's grace in my father, in my life, in terms of ministerial profitings and other things, I would have stopped practicing. That would be a sign that it was never revealed. Because one of the proofs I taught it so is that today I was not a born prophet. I saw in scriptures, the Bible says, Elisha was pouring water in the hand of Elijah. And he had a double portion of what Elijah carried. 
I saw that Saul met with Samuel and became a prophet. So I said, okay, you can also walk in the prophetic, being committed to a prophet. So if I wasn't seeing it, I would have questioned my involvement. Papa said years ago, he said, the child of an oracle don't pray for miracles. If I wasn't seeing some financial evidence, I would have questioned myself. A world in dry heavens is a sign that you are doing it for human recognition, not divine reward. If you are genuinely involved, revelations gives you what men can't give you. Take your seat. Can I say something? Why did God reject Cain's sacrifice? Genesis 13 verse 17. Why did God reject the sacrifice of Cain? He said, arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it. I will give it on today. Am I speaking to somebody? Hear this well. Let me say something to us. If you read your Bible, you will discover that when I first saw in the scripture that the Bible says God rejected the sacrifice of Cain and accepted the sacrifice of Abel, I began to ask myself a question. What is the rationale behind this matter? And then I went further and I discovered that God said to to, to, to Cain, he said, Cain, why are you angry? Why are you rough? He said, if you had done the right thing, if you had done the right thing, would I have rejected you if you had done the right thing? So, it's, there was nothing that made God to accept Abel rather than Abel did what? The right thing. Genesis 4.17. 417. Am I talking to somebody? He said, and Cain, 4 7, sorry, 4 7. Genesis 4 7. He said, And if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, seeing light at thy door, and unto thee shall be this desire, and thou shalt rule over him. If thou doest well, that is to say that God accepted Cain, Abel, is because he did well. What was the revelation that made God to say Abel did well? What was the revelation? As at that time, do you imagine God just finished with their father and told their father, I said, I caused the earth for your sake. And then when God demanded for sacrifice, Abel went to bring from where God has caused. Am I talking to somebody here? So as at that time, you don't expect God to accept what was coming from a cost possession. Am I speaking to somebody? And then what is his name? His brother. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. Bible said he brought to God a what? A lamb. Bible said the lamb of God that was slain. He moved from the foundation of the earth. So having a revelation of what to do is what get God on your side. Can I rush through some things? Genesis 22 verse 1. If you read verse 12. You understand the revelation that God got to the side of Abraham. Abraham was a man who loved God and gave God as it were. Verse 12 of Genesis 22. You see it all. God said to Abraham, Bible said, and God tempted Abraham. And said, give me thy son, thy only son, whom thou lovest. And Abraham gave God not considering himself. Am I talking to somebody? Verse 12 said, and he said, lay not thy hand upon the Lord, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God. Seest thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from who? Talk to me, church, from who? Do you know the son we are talking about? That's the son of the promise. That's the son at his old age. That's what God told him to bring. You know what the revelation is? Abraham, he said, you have not withheld that holy son from me. From me. That's a man you told to leave his father's house. He didn't argue. Your sacrifice is a true test of your love. Am I talking this morning? He said, you didn't withhold your only son from me. 
And God said to Abraham, in blessing I will bless you. In multiply, I will multiply. Revelation can put you, take you outside your comfort zone. Practicing revelation is not convenient. Practicing revelation most times is not comfortable. When you walk with God and you hear God, if you hear God, I hear people, all they hear from God is they hear God for many things. They don't hear God for themselves. The makings of genuine men of God is that they have an ability to hear God for themselves. And men who hear God are not gatherers. They are scatterers. Because when God speaks, some things will leave you. I was praying to God. I said, Father, I have a building project of about hundreds of millions. What must I do? I was just crying to God. I said, Father, I need your favor. I want you to happen to me in a dimension that is beyond human comprehension. I was just crying to God. I've done sacrifices on the altar. I've laid it there, asking the Lord for the favor doors to bust open. I was crying and I was just, I think in Canada, I be Vienna, one of the nations I traveled to recently. And I heard the voice of the Lord said to me, he said, send for all the pastors, call for a regional meeting. And I called for a regional meeting. I said, Father, what will I do? I said, Lord, I'm landing late. When will be the meeting? He said, there's nothing to discuss in that meeting. Ask all of them. Anyone that has a church project problem, pay for the problem. I said, Father, what? I said, I'm looking for money. You are telling me to... And I called for a meeting after the, uh, Friday all night. And we sat in the office. I said, okay, you, what is your challenge? One said half a million. One said 200. One said 120. One said, I accumulated all that they brought. And I opened my job. I began to do transfer to every one of them. Or some of them. Take, take, take. Those who could prove their point. What was I doing? I heard the Lord saying to me, what is the revelation? There is he that scattered. Yeah! I needed to gather that money to get to where I'm going to. God says, scatter it. You plant yam by choking it. You plant rice by scattering it. And when you want to grow rice, you don't grow rice by your senses. You grow rice. Rice. I... Am I talking to somebody? I told them every one of them were happy. Sending me messages. Why it was a mountain for them. And the Lord said to me. A few years ago I heard the testimony of a man, multi-millionaire who came to the altar to pray. I think he was asking God for a project of about three billion. And while he was crying, another man came to the altar to pray. A poor man per se who was disturbing. You know the voice of the broke can be very loud. Makwaye! Malabo! Shatabalata! What was his problem? His problem was about 36,000 naira. House rent of 3,000 per month. It was very loud. The rich man was on the altar crying to God. Father, I need your intervention. I need your help. And that one was shouting. So he just turned to the young man and said, please, what is the issue? The young man said, my landlord is on my neck. How much? He said, one year rent. How much? 36,000 now. He said, don't disturb God alone again. He said, take the money. Go and pay. They now turned and said, Father, I am here. And that the Lord looked at him by virtue of the fact. He said to Abraham, I will bless you. Blessing you is not the revelation. The revelation is, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. As long as you practice the revelation of being a blessing, God has no option than to keep it. It's simple. The beauty of revelation is that it puts you at advantage at the end of it all. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. Many years ago, a great man said, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. When he said it, it's a revelation that if it does not click, you criticize it. But when it clicks, you increase in size with it. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm telling you. A few years ago, the Lord told me, said, when you are excited to help those you are better than, I will raise those better than you to help you. He said, for whatsoever a man soweth, what shall he? Same. Shall he reap? 
He said, he that shutteth his ear to the cry of the poor, when he cries, even God will not hear. Even God will not hear. Abraham had this value system for God. Even if he has his condition, God was still his revelation. He understood that in the first place, Isaac is not a product of his work. Isaac was a product of his revelation. Isaac didn't come because Abraham was a man. Isaac came because God spoke. <laughs> because biologically, Isaac was dead. I mean, Abraham was dead. Bible says he was shrieking in age. Eh? The womb of Sarah was feeble. Abraham was dead in body, but against hope, he believed in hope. And it was counted to him for what? For righteousness. So Abraham had this revelational understanding that it was not the strength of his spermatozoa that brought Isaac. It was the strength of revelation. So if the God who brought him in the first place say I should bring him, then why am I waiting for? You think your strength is what makes you prevail. That's why you guide all you get, can all you get and sit on the can. And that's why you are broke. That's why you are broke. It was this his spam that brought Isaac. It was God's word. 100 years, give woman bele, how? And the woman was how many years? 90. So both of them, Bible told us that against hope, he believed in hope. That the womb of Sarah was feeble. His body was dead. Yet Isaac came. And that the God, he has understanding and that God give me the first place. Am I talking to somebody? Here? If the God who brought it said he needs it, what am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? He has an understanding that God is not a murderer. It's not a murderer. God can't kill. It's not his nature. Some of you now, God... You think God, ah, let me ask you a question. Do you know a lot of us don't have a revelation of God and we behave like our little children who you bought them the pizza in the first place. Now you are telling them, give me pizza. Don't run with it. Run with it. Say, no, daddy, I won't give you. I won't give you. Can I have some of the pizza? No, you want to shop my ration. They suddenly forget or forgot that it was you who bought the pizza and you have the money to buy the shop if you so choose. And you know most times when the children hold back the money you give them from giving you, when they sleep, they drop it. <laughs> Am I saying something? The third character I want to astray, Anna put God first, understanding that the operations of the temple needed attention. Why did Anna get pregnant? Why did Anna get a child? Anna went to the Shiloh several times and there was no miracle. But when Anna went that day, I think in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11, Anna made a vow to God. Having an understanding that the light in the temple must not go off. And the sons of Eli were messing up. And Anna said to God, give me a male child and I'll give you a prophet. And God saw that Anna wasn't biased, she wasn't greedy. God was her focus. When God becomes your priority, then see how God will make you men's choice. Men will long for you when God is your ultimate value. Men who put God first are always first. Quote me anywhere. And that single, Anna came to Shiloh several times. No miracle. But when she came with a revelation, she got a miracle. And the Bible says she came back to redeem the vow. If you read verse 12 down to the end, she came back to redeem the vow. And God took over the rest. Am I talking to someone? Have you read the story of Solomon? In 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 7, I mean verse 2. If you get to verse 6, then you read it again, you get to verse 14. You understand what I'm talking about. Solomon came to Gibeon and sacrificed to the Lord. After that sacrifice, Heaven took over Solomon's case. And he had an encounter with God. Let's check his encounter. Verse 6. Verse 6 of First Kings. It said, And Solomon said, Thou art showed unto thy servant David my father. Great mercy. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness. And in uprightness of heart. With thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness. That thou hast given 
him a son to sit on his throne. Listen to Solomon's talk. It was about God. There was no him. Thou hast loved my father. You have honored my father. You have settled my father. Verse 7. He said, and now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I'm but a little child. I know not how to go out and how to come in. What was he doing? In his wisdom, he was recognizing God in everything. You are too full of yourself. That's why you don't see God. Bible says, blessed are they that taste and hung after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The Bible says, as soon as the emptiness was over, the cruise of oil stopped to flow. It is emptiness of human, of the earth, that determines the release of heaven. Verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude's sake. Verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for whom is able to judge this thy so great a people. Verse 10. Can you keep going till I get to 12? And the speech pleased. Can we read this one together? One to go. Shout it where? That Solomon had asked this thing. What pleased the Lord? What was the speech? There was no self. No greed. The speech was about God. The people. The assignment. And then God replied Solomon. The next verse. He said, and God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked thyself long life, neither hast asked riches, for thyself, nor has asked the life of thy enemies, but has asked for thine understanding to design judgment. Verse 12, heaven released. Behold, I have done according to thy words. I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee. Before thee, neither after thee, shall any arise like unto thee. 13. And I have also given thee, someone shall also, also say it like a Christian, given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, to that there shall be not any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. How did he get it? He had a revelation of God's pattern. Let me say something to you. Men who have caught divine revelation are not arrogant. They are not proud. They are not greedy. They are not convertious. They are, they are manifestation. They manifest the fruits of the spirit, not just the gift. Not just the gift. When you see a man in whom there is arrogance, check the spirit that is working through him. You no, know, there are times that the gift of God is without repentance. I fear that scripture. Because God can walk away, you are still manifesting. That's why I say on the last day, did I not cast out devils in your name? He said, I know you not. It is not your portion. Amen. Genesis 8 verse 20. If you read your Bible, you check the value system. Noah had the revelation of God. That God cannot be second class. God is the first. And the Bible says, and Noah built an altar. Somebody shout an altar. And the Lord, and to the Lord, and took of every, somebody shout clean beast. Clean fowl. And offered there as a bond sacrifice. If you read the other part. Bible said he went to heaven as a sweet smelling savour, and God said, No, never again will I destroy the earth with flood. Why? Clean beast. It's a revelation of God. When you understand the supreme mercy of God, you understand what I'm talking about. Do you know some of us in our own way? When I have money in my hand and I need to give God an offering, I select the new one for him and keep the dirty one. It's my own understanding. I love new money. If you want to save money in my hand, give me mint. I can be seen bole. And I won't buy because the only money in my pocket is new money. Those days. Let me use those days. Oti now. Yeah, somebody said amen. 
In 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 9, the Shunammite woman said, I perceive. I perceive. The word perceive means I, there's this revelation and understanding that is pricking in my spirit. This guy is a holy man of God. And as soon as they did what they did, the rest became testimony. Have you read Job chapter 1 verse 20 to 22? Job chapter 1 verse 20. Do you know what befell Job? Job 1 20 to 22. I took my time. I want to talk to somebody today. Because there are some of us who relatively we are like, Oh God, oh God, what is the revelation behind your service? Who are you doing it for? What's the revelation? Your strength is getting weak because it was never revealed to you. You are doing it because of Sister Maria. You are doing it for because of Brother Charles. Ah, may I quick go so that uh, uh, Mrs. Jesse no go talk, say I no come earlier. Let me quick go so that Pastor will not complain. Is that your revelation? You will soon be tired. Soon be tired. But when you're doing it because there's this eye that is watching you, then you will soon be rewarded. He said, how can I stay in a beautiful house and the hack of God is in a tent? I needed to do a website for my company. I got the people who are going to do it. Why they were working on that thing? It dawned on me that my company wants to have a website God does not have. I told the young man, stop my own first. Design church own. When you are through with church, you design my own. That is my own understanding of working with God. I ask myself questions. If somebody enter my house today, the person will obviously say, wow, wonderful place. If somebody enters the church, what would the person say? I can't be the pastor of a church that is dirty and I own a house that is clean. It's a sign. That's my value. It's my value system. It's my value system. Am I speaking to somebody? Every one of you must understand that this thing is the revelation. The word value is another word that can use to explain your approach to the matters of God, which is a revelation. You have not seen the revelation of your pastor, of your man of God. You don't have the revelation of service. You don't have the revelation of worship. You don't have the revelation. That's why you are still struggling, still having problems. Sir! My house is an hour plus away from church. Yes. An hour plus. God has helped me. I'm relatively the senior pastor in Lagos. If there's no traffic, God bless you. I get here before many of you. Not because I cannot just throw in. During uh, choir administration, we enter the altar. Lion of the tribe of the house has come. No. We grew with it. Worshipping God is a revelation. Working for God is a revelation. Giving to the kingdom is a revelation. Helping people is a revelation. It's not a thing that as it were, where there is media presence, to God be the glory. Where there is a reward, to God be the glory. I ask somebody, how can the orphans in your church be hungry and you are everywhere in an orphanage home? Because the ones in charge, there's no camera. Don't get me wrong. Am I talking to somebody? He said, how can I stay in the beautiful house? And the hack of God is in the tent. I said, Job chapter 1 verse 22. He said, then Job arose. And rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and did what? Talk to me and did what? Do you know what befell Job? Lost his children, lost everything, and all he would do at the end of it all was to do what? 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job was consoling himself. That I have no reason not to love God the more. I have no reason not to serve him. After all, I came naked and naked I will go. If everything left, my love for God can't go down. No wonder Paul said, 
what shall separate us from the love of God? Because when serving God is a revelation, your condition don't shake your stand. Don't shake your stand. Somebody said to me on Friday, you had a special worship meeting. On Saturday, you gave to the poor. On Sunday, you did a carol service. And on Monday, you got the news that your father was dead. If you saw me on Tuesday, I was still on the altar jumping and praising God. Because in the first place, if you allowed it to happen, you have an ultimate purpose for it. And after that thing, I knew something about me increased. Because there are times when revelation keeps you in the midst of the battle. There are some of you now, huh? This God, I'm not going to serve him again. All right, don't tell you. Never still give me husband. Is husband your revelation? You know what the Bible says? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be handled. I had the revelation to serve. I don't have to be the leader to serve. Whoever is there, as long as it's an opportunity to serve, who serve? Who serve? Who serve? Praise the Lord in this house. Look at Job 22. 22. He said, in all these things, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Can we read that together? Why? When the wife came to him one time and said, Job, why not cause God and die? You know what Job said? Foolish woman. He said, I know my Redeemer. Leave it. I know. He was speaking from a revelation perspective that even though I'm in this condition, I know. That faithful is he who has begun, who always, I know. That he is the author and the finisher, I know. He that gave me in the first place is still on the throne, I know. You can lose everything, but don't lose him. Don't lose him. Have a revelation of God. Love him because he's God. Don't love him because of gold. Am I talking to someone? Daniel said, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2 verse 9 verse 2, he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. In John 11, when Jesus came, he said to them, did I not tell you I'm the revelation and the resurrection and the life? They were crying because they don't have a revelational understanding of the Jesus that was with them. That this man carried an ability to bring Lazarus back to life. And that was how it ended. Am I talking to somebody? Many of you, you have read your scriptures as it were. Praise the Lord here. Yeah. In Matthew 27 verse 16 and 17. You know what they said? They said, release to us Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. I have said it here before. When they were saying release Barabbas, they were only talking about a revelation of something that was to happen. Barabbas was a condemned thief. If you check your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse, I think 21. The Bible said, he that knew no sin became sin. Jesus was not sinner. He was not a sinner. He was not a sinner. He cooked our sin. He that knew no sin. He said for he that made him to be sin for us. He, for he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God. So Jesus was not a sinner. He knew no sin. God made him sin for us. So when they were saying release Barabbas, they were saying release the sinner and crucify sin. Because Jesus was made sin. So when they nailed Jesus to the cross, they were nailing Jesus, they were nailing sin to the cross and releasing Barabbas the sinner. So before he went to the cross, that revelational practice was what brought us out of iniquity. And then they said, they regretted if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. There is something I will show you and I pray in this first service. Is somebody still here? Matthew chapter 15 verse 22 to 28. I want to show you that it's not about emotions. It's about the practice of revelation. 
Stop crying and thinking that tears is what is supposed to get God on your side. Revelation. Can we read it together? I want to go. Let's read it like mass choir. Let's go back. Wait, wait. Want to go. And behold, a woman of Cana came out of the same coast and did what? I can't hear you. And did what? Unto him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. What did Jesus do? Bob said, but he answered her not word. Talk to me, church. What did he do? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after horse. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. Listen. Did Jesus answer her cry? Talk to me. Did he answer her cry? But when the disciples came to him, he now spoke to his disciples. Verse 25. He said, Then came she. Wait. Wait. Did Jesus answer her when she cried? No. When the disciples came, Jesus now told his disciples when they were troubling him, send her away. He said, I'm not sent to the lost sheep, I'm sent to this. That the woman, while he was talking with his disciples, I believe, the woman came. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Read the next. But he answered and said, it's not meant to take the children's bread. What is the revelation? Your tears may not get him to talk. Your worship. When Job was restored, I didn't have to think twice because the attitude of Job is not the attitude that he will die with his affliction. Revelation may take you through the prison, but will settle you within the palace. That's a revelation. There are many times your revelation of God will put you in trouble. But the same revelation has an ability to bring you out of trouble and make you a trouble to set a problem solver. Am I talking to somebody here? Every one of you, listen to me. What is your revelation? You are battling to pray because you don't have a revelation of prayers. You are battling to, 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 to worship. You don't have a revelation of worship. Am I talking to somebody? When this thing is a revelation, you don't struggle. You don't struggle. You don't struggle. When I'm doing what I'm doing, a young man said something. Please permit me to deviate. A young man looked at me and said, Sir, you've been winning this award. And I said, I've never, I've never lived to win an award. I've just lived my life. You know why he was talking? I said to the young man, I said, you can try it. You'll be tired along the way. Because why? If it is revealed, your revelation becomes your strength. It doesn't matter how they're shaking, your revelation keeps you. Just having an understanding that God is able to do a sitting abundantly. Above all, we can ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work. That just keeps you going. Just having an understanding that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Just, just, just keeps you going. Have you read Psalm 122 verse 1? Psalm 122 verse 1. Have you read it? If you have read Psalm 122 verse 1, you won't struggle to serve God. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. I was what? I was what? Psalm 133 verse 1. Can you read that also? Psalm 133 verse 1. He said, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. What's your revelation? When you are getting dressed to go to church, what's your revelation? When you practice what you practice by revelation, you go up. But if you practice it by emotions, you keep struggling. Stand on your feet. No church without you. Omega Fire Ministries Lagos, the wealthy place, recognizes you in the church. Because you are the church we're looking forward to be with. Come worship with us at Plot 2 Stroke 3, Kudirat Abiola Way by First Bank Bus Stop, Oregu, Ikeja, Lagos. We, the church, needs you. 
Because you matter. Welcome to church. To church.